the amen the word of God tells us he will abundantly pardon your iniquity amen he will abundantly pardon your iniquity but you have to make up your mind in repentance I'm no longer going to live the way I once lived amen and turn from your sin turn from your sin amen turn amen. from it yes amen praise the Lord praise the Lord Hallelujah. <clears throat> and lastly, we owe God faithfulness. Yes. You know, how many know this, this, this steward? He was commended. And that puzzled me. I read a commentary. And it said he was commended because he made provision for his future. Because it was an unjust deed, unjust act that he did. But he was commended because he made provision for his future. I ask you this, what provision are you making for your future today? Are you faithful? God's looking for faithful people, amen? amen. He wasn't commended for his line of force stealing. He was commended for his preparation for his future. You know, Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You say, why am I lacking in my life? Because something is not lined up in your life with the word of God. Yeah. Amen. You need to line your life and your heart up with the word of God, and everything else will fall into place. We must admit our life doesn't work any other way. It, it's, it's not going to work any other way but through Jesus. Amen. We have to make up our mind, you know what, that I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to be committed. You know, you think of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel. You know how many know that they were put in the fiery furnace, but they had their mind made out, I'm going to be faithful Amen. no matter what. They said, oh, king, they said, we're not careful to answer you. They were given a second chance, and they said, we're not careful to answer you. Church, let me tell you, when the devil says, you know what, I'm going to give you another opportunity to compromise, to be unfaithful to God, you tell him, let me tell you, old devil, I'm not careful to answer you. Amen. You know, we need to stand up in this day and age and make up our minds, you know what, that I'm going to stand for God, I'm going to live for God. I don't care if I'm martyred for his name, but I'm going to stand for God no matter what. Amen. No matter what, I'm going to stand for God. The apostle Paul said what? He said, none of these things move me. He said, what shall separate me from the love of God? Right. Nothing yeah. shall separate me from the love of God. I'm going to be faithful to God. Why? Because he was faithful even unto death yeah. for me while I was yet a sinner. Christ loved me and died for my yeah. sins that I can be forgiven. Amen. Amen. So how many know we need to seek God and be faithful to him and his kingdom? You know, how many know many times we're looking for the easy way? Right. Easy does it. Yeah. You know, I was thinking of the man that did the Ponzi scheme uh, uh, years back, and, and how many know that he was making that money? He was making that quick cash. You know, but how many know when the stock market collapsed, what happened? Easy comes, easy goes. You know, we're looking for a quick fix in our life. You know what? I'm, I'm, I need an NA program. I need a, a higher power. What you need is Jesus Christ. You need the 13th step in that salvation. Amen. It should be number one. But how many know Christ is number one? And you need to come to a place of repentance and realize, you know what? I need to be faithful to God and quit trying to go easy goes. Easy come. Easy come. Easy go. Excuse me. You know, how many know what we owe God is our life? The word of God tells us in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. You know, how many know that I owe God my very life? Amen. Yeah. I owe God my very life. You know, if he says, you know what, you need to love that individual. You need to go witness to them. You need to go visit them. You need to go pick them up for church. You know how many know that my vehicle is not my vehicle. My vehicle belongs to God. You know, in the title, I had it registered in my name, but it should say the Holy Ghost on there. Why? Because it belongs to God. Amen. On my house, the title should say, you know what? The Holy Ghost. Why? Because that house belongs to God, and it's just a tool by a means to win people to God. Amen. If it's anything more, you know, know then it's an idol to me you know how many know that we need to make up our mind i'm gonna be faithful to god no matter what amen whatever god demands of me i'm gonna perform it 
You know, I told the story of my daughter's grandma when I when, when I when, when when you know it was it was just a, a bitter a bitter uh, relationship. I had got full custody of my daughter, and how many know that 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 she hated me because I got custody over her daughter. And one day she shows up at my work and she says, "I'm coming to church tonight." I thought, man, why why don't you just go somewhere else? So she ended up coming on to church and she, and she ended up uh, getting her giving her life to the Lord. Amen. She she after church she said, "You know what?" She said, can you give me a ride home? Can you give me a ride home? I said, I'll give you a ride home. And afterwards she said, after I gave her that ride home, she said, you know, can you pick me up the next time? You know how many know my flesh didn't want to love her? My flesh didn't want to pray for those that despitefully used me. But how many know I did what God demanded of me if I wanted to be right with him, amen? And how many know she's serving God to this day? Why? You know, he said that, you know what, I'll make your enemies to be at peace with you, amen? I'll make your very enemies to be at peace with you. You say, you know what, preacher, I'm unfaithful to God. But how many know if you turn your life over to God and get faithful with God, he'll be faithful to you, amen? Yeah. He will be faithful to you. Yes, Praise amen. the Lord. Praise amen. the Lord. You know, I was thinking when I worked for this one company in a warehouse, you know, th there were just so many unfaithful people. They would do whatever they wanted on the job. They didn't care about nothing. You know, they would be fooling around, everybody playing around. But how many know when the president of the company would come around, everybody would get, get to working? You know, how many know that they were unfaithful people? Why? Because they were men pleasers. They only cared about what the boss thought of them. They didn't care about what, about the company. They didn't care about that. You know, how many know that's the way we are many times? We just care about, you know what, pleasing so-and-so, pleasing our pastor, or, 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 or pleasing our mom, or pleasing our dad. But how many know that we need to realize, you know what? I need to please God. My goal, my mission for this life is to please God and everything else will fall into place. Yes. You know, if this unfaithful steward would have just made up his mind, you know what, I want to please my master. You know, when we come to that place, I'm going to please my master. You know, how many know God can do something through us? Amen. God can do something through us. We have to be faithful. Faithful people. Yes. You think of an athlete. They don't just, you know what, they just say, they're just not in the pros overnight hey you're in high school now you're in the pros you know what it takes great commitment they go to college you know they, they they do different things you know they practice they come early they leave late from practice you know if you want to be a good christian or a good follower of christ make up your mind you know what that i'm going to be in his word i'm going to be in his house i'm going to be in prayer why i'm going to be a faithful steward amen i'm going to be a faithful steward to what god give, gave me amen we have to make up our mind i'm going to be faithful to God, amen? Yes. Faithful to God. If you're here tonight, if you're here tonight, praise the Lord. I know I didn't preach very long, but if you're here tonight, you say, you know what? I realize that I owe God my whole life. I realize, you know what? I've been fooling around and dabbling in sin and thinking I could just come and say I apologize, God, and think that God's going to accept it. You know, God's looking for us to be honest, first of all. You say, you know what, I'm dishonest here. Is there anybody on the sound of my voice that raises their hand or confesses in their heart? You know, I've been unfaithful. I haven't been honest before God. And I want to be honest and I want to make up my mind to serve the Lord. Is there anybody on the sound of my voice? If, you, if you're out there in the street, you can come, we'll pray for you. Is there anybody that, that's here and says, you know what, I haven't truly repented of my sin. In other words, when you repent of your sin, it's a 180 degree turn. You forsake it and you no longer pick it up. You hear me say, I haven't forsaken my sin. I want to forsake my sin tonight. Is there anybody on the sound of my voice? You either raise your hand or you can come on over here. We'll pray for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Or you hear me say, you know what? been unfaithful to you God God's looking for you to be faithful to him you see I've been unfaithful God what you have given me I haven't used it as you would have me to use it you raise your hand you say you know what I haven't been as faithful as I should have been you raise your hand is there anybody let's gather around and pray and seek the Lord for a season
nasceu com ele that you brought forth, God, into this street tonight. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for every ear that heard, God. 
And oh God, I know you said that your word would never come back void, Lord, and I thank you for that. Oh God, we just love you tonight, God. We praise you, Lord. We exalt you, we magnify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh yes, there is only one cure for your life. There's only one answer for the problems that you and I face. And that's to be born again by the Spirit of Almighty God. It's not a church that can save you. It's not like Brother Quinn said, opening up the door for an old lady, even though that may be nice. But there is only one thing that can save you and that can set you free and deliver you from the bondages of sin. And that is a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus told a man by the name of Nicodemus, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. Hallelujah. What do you mean? Born again. That means you've got to ask Christ to live in your heart and you've got to live for Him. That's the only way you're going to make it into that land called heaven. And I'm thankful tonight. I don't have to hope I make it. I can know that I'm ready to meet God because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to sing one more song tonight and if you're here listening under the sound of my voice tonight, he said, Preacher, I want to give my heart to Jesus tonight. I was listening to what the preacher was saying tonight, and I'm ready to get right with God. Just make your way down to this altar. Say, what is this altar? It's just a place where you pray. It's a place where you talk to God. Just saying words won't do one thing for you. You've got to believe these words. What is it that has you bound? I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is able to set you free. Amen. Let's sing one more song tonight. Sing, oh, the blood of Jesus. Let's all stand to our feet once again. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. thank you tonight God for everyone that was here tonight I thank you Lord for those that may have not been here under the tent God but Lord they were here listening and Lord we thank you for that Lord I thank you Lord for every soul God that heard your word tonight and I ask you Lord God that your word would find a proper lodging place in their hearts God, and let them not be able to shake what they've heard tonight, but God, continue to deal with their heart, Lord, about their eternal soul. God, we just give you all the praise and all of the glory. And Lord, we continue to pray over this community. We pray, we continue to pray, Lord, against drugs 
against alcohol, against abuse, against perversion. In the name of Jesus, Satan, loose your hold from this community. And oh God, I pray, Lord, a mighty revival, Lord, of conviction, Lord God, to roam these streets, Lord, to roam the alleys, Lord, to roam the park, Lord. God, we just give you all the praise and all the glory for what you've done tonight. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless.